most Richard Wilson in this training video module is on storytelling. This is a really important thing to get trained on because if you can tell stories really well, uh, you'll be better at speaking, you'll be better at writing articles, blog posts, and books, you'll be better at selling because you can establish yourself as an authority who's kind of earned your way to the top and then sell to people without them feeling like you're a salesperson. And that's really important. As soon as somebody thinks that you're selling them something, they often put up these guards and then you have to work twice as hard to get past those things. So, um, first I'd like to start with the story of how my business started so you can get a feeling for why telling the storytelling is so important. When I first started my business, I actually wasn't meaning to start a business. I had started many businesses in the past, most have failed. One in college ended up making a thousand, two thousand dollars a month in profit. But anyway, when I first started the business, it was a complete accident. What happened was that I started a blog. I was living in Boston at the time, and I started a blog on two things. One was living in Boston and going to Harvard. The second thing was on marketing and capital raising. At the time, I was raising capital for investment funds. And what happened was nobody wanted to read about me being in Boston or even about me going to Harvard. They wanted to read about me raising capital and learning about marketing and sharing my stories in those areas. And I figured that out because I was just writing blog posts. I'd only written 20 or 30 blog posts. And I looked at my web statistics. It turned out that 90% of my traffic were on those capital raising and marketing articles I'd written. So what I did was I wrote one article one article per week uh, consistently on capital raising and marketing. My traffic went up to 15 hits a day. I got very excited. And I started writing more articles. I started doing two to four articles a week. Um, at that point, it took about a month, and then my traffic went up to 100 hits a day. At that point, I kind of uh, looked around and said, wow, this is actually, you know, this can turn into something. I'm barely putting any time into this. I'm getting a lot of people to my website. So what I started doing is writing one article per day, and I started also studying search engine optimization and how to get my websites to rank well, or my blog at that time to rank well on Google. Um, that turned into getting 1,000 hits a day, and eventually 10,000 hits a day on my blog. Now, my business started just as that one blog. Um, I had some advertisers. I then got hired by Forbes to write some articles for one of their websites. Um, and I basically then would just look at the hundreds of emails I'd get every day coming in from the blog and what people are emailing me about every single day over and over and over again. They're emailing me trying to find what course they should take or what training program they should take or you know what seminar should they go to or where could they get such and such resource. What I did was started keeping track of what those common questions were and then every product that we launched um, was based on one of those emails that came in. So basically we didn't have to come up with any of our own product ideas or things that could work or not work. We only launched things that people were asking for over and over and over again. Um, I share that story because it worked very well. After we launched our first product, our revenues uh, went up from about $2,000 a month to $4,000 a month. Uh, we then launched a few more products. Uh, and after testing out a few different markets, in one three month period, we launched six different products. It turned out we launched that many products at once, only two out of those six really worked well at all. Um, but those were all based on feedback that we had gotten in the past from our customers. So I wanted to share that whole story with you to, to show a couple different points. One is that you can weave authority points into your story without making it seem like you're bragging about yourself. So for example, I mentioned that our blog had, uh, sometimes it's up to 10,000 hits a day. And I wasn't saying that in a bragging way. I was really just sh showing the story of how we got there. And it's probably more believable that that's actually true because I can show the struggle and share that struggle I went through to get to that much traffic. Um, I also shared how I was living in Boston and going to Harvard at the time. Uh, that's an authority point. I kind of weaved into the story. It doesn't seem like I'm bragging. I'm not sitting here wearing a shirt that says Harvard across the top. It's not really in your face. It's just a mention of it, which makes it more natural again, more believable again, and more authoritative. Um, I also wanted to share that story just so you can see how easily it is to turn any experience you have into a story. Uh, if you go and you're giving a speech on a topic, uh, no matter what that topic is, I'm sure there's some story you can share of an anonymous client you've worked with, with yourself, how you first discovered how important this area was, etc. Use stories as much as possible. Now I'm going to share with you a few tips when you're telling stories. Uh, the first thing is realize that 
no matter what your goal is for that story, it is going to make it come across as more, more human, more natural, more genuine. So try to use it as early as possible within your speech or in first introducing yourself to somebody and tell your story to them. Uh, the second tip is that stories work in any format. Uh, stories work in TV shows, stories work in movies. So if you're recording a video like this, use a story. If you're giving a speech, use a story. If you're writing a book, use a story. If you're writing a blog post, use a story, etc., etc. Use a story in any format. It works. People love stories. Uh, they're more fun to read than just a normal article or a normal book. Uh, the next tip is to use a pattern of storytelling called the hero's journey. The hero's journey is something that's used within all great movies, uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and basically it goes that there is a hero that doesn't even know they're a hero, it's just an average person actually, it has to be an average person. Um, they get approached by an opportunity, uh, typically the hero will deny the chance to take that opportunity, oh no thanks, no it's not for me, no I don't want to go on that adventure, that challenge, uh, no I won't do that. Uh, then they get approached again somehow, and they get almost forced into it. Um, something happens to a family member, which forces them to go. Uh, something happens to them personally, their house gets destroyed, their land gets attacked, someone goes to war, etc. They get pulled into this adventure. Uh, once they're in that adventure, there are challenges they go up against. Uh, they also typically are up against some sort of enemy, uh, whether that personifies evil overall or the head of some evil state or empire, Darth Vader. Um, and typically throughout the story, that enemy gets stronger and stronger and they look more and more evil. And the hero uh, takes a long time to do so, but eventually conquers the evil and victorious and that's the end of the story. So when you translate that to business, what you need to do is come up with your own storyline. You know, what did you get kind of, what did you kind of fall into? What fell into your lap? What kind of happened by accident? What struggle you went through? And how you came out on top after that struggle. By telling the story of that struggle, using the hero's journey, is a good standard way to tell a great story. Um, if you want to see examples of stories and have tell a story of your own business life, I have a couple. Uh, one is actually the one I just told you about. Another can be seen on our website, uh, one of my websites, ceotraining.com. If you go to ceotraining.com and click on About Richard and look below my bio, you can actually see my story and it shows a good seven or eight paragraphs version of my story and how my business got started and how I got to where I am today. Um, so I hope that helps between all the video tips, the example of a story, the pattern of the hero's journey so you can use storytelling within your own business, and also looking at my story on ceotraining.com for kind of a written example of a good story. Um, I hope that helps you a lot. This is something that I'm still studying. I'm still a student of storytelling, and it's something that I'll continue to study because it's so powerful in communicating ideas or selling products and services. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again soon.